everyone. Minasan konnichiwa. Welcome to another edition of Have a Coke and Tea with the Society. My name is Yoshi Domoto. I'm the executive director of the Japan America Society of Georgia. And so excited today as we have a very, very special edition. I'm here today with、uh, many of our friends from the Georgia Department of Economic Development. The Japan America Society, we have a very close relationship as our missions overlap in promoting. Uh, mutual understanding between the people of Japan and Georgia. And we cannot do that without our friends、uh, at the department. So, so excited to have、uh, our special guest with us.、Uh, but today we'll be co hosting with our chair, Mr. Al Hodge, the founder and CEO of Hodge Consulting Services. Mr. Al, hello, hello. What are you drinking today? I got some tea in my hand, if you can see that. But、uh, what are you enjoying?、I'm、drinking Georgia's favorite, Coca Cola. Which also, of course, has a great presence in Japan. That's right. Well, Mr. Al, let's get started. And uh, uh, who do we have on board today、uh, as our special guest member spotlights? Well, this is an extra treat and a triple bonus. We have Scott McMurray, who is Deputy Commissioner for Global Commerce for the Georgia Department of Economic Development, Joseph Hunteman, Senior Project Manager for the department and the incoming. Uh, project uh, director, the director for the Japan office in Tokyo. And most recently, we've been joined by Melissa Takauchi, and she is the incoming project manager for the Global Commerce Division. And as we'll hear, lots of Japanese connection and worldwide connection. So we're very fortunate to have all three of these professionals with us for economic development and each. Uh, has either played a role or will play a very important role for our state for both,、um, both ways for investment、uh, in Japan and in Georgia. And today we spotlight especially Georgia. And with that in mind, Scott, would you describe for us、uh, the role for the department with Japan and Georgia? And if you prefer, a little bit of a global overview as well. Sure, thank you, Al. Hey, everybody.、Uh, the Georgia Department of Economic Development、uh, is the main sales and marketing arm for Georgia. We market our state all over the world and, of course,、uh, within the United States. And we do have an office in Tokyo that has been there since 1973. It was actually our very first overseas office,、uh, established by then Governor、uh, Jimmy Carter. Uh, here in Georgia. And over the, the, the many years, we have、uh, further strengthened and developed the relationship、uh, that we have、uh, with Japan. And so, what we do at the department is to uh, attract uh, businesses to come to Georgia. And that is specifically what、uh, I do with Joseph and Melissa. We're in charge of business recruitment and retention for the state. The larger department、uh, also covers,、uh, we have a film division. You may have heard of all the movies that are being produced and TV shows here in Georgia.、Uh, that's been very successful. We also have an international trade division that helps Georgia manufacturers find export markets abroad for their products.、Uh, we also have a、uh, marketing and communications division that helps us. Again,、uh, advertise and market our state、uh, all over the world.、Uh, and there are、uh, a few other divisions,、uh, including tourism. So, really, in one sense, it's kind of all of the、uh, money making divisions uh, for uh, the, uh, the state of Georgia, all housed under the greater umbrella of the Department of Economic Development. And、uh, I've been doing this、uh, since 2005. Well, and you've been doing it well. And if we take a look at the map of Georgia, spotted throughout the state are key Japanese investments. And that's very, very encouraging. I think Yoshi wants to participate in this as well. Sure, yeah. So, yeah, Georgia has so many things that we should be proud of. And that, that's thanks to,、uh, to the department and all of its team members and different、uh, divisions, part of the department, too. But, But Scott, I know you have a,、um, a very unique connection、uh, and history with Japan, too.、Uh, not only are you a dai senpai of mine, of 
economic development and U.S.-Japan relations, uh, but uh, I know you've taught English in Japan. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about your unique history with Japan, your connection, and how has that helped you in your role uh, as deputy commissioner at the department? Sure. Um, I'm a native son of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I grew up in a little town outside of Boston and came down for uh, college. I went to Emory University here in Atlanta. And from there, I, would, I wanted to be a teacher. And in 19, <laughs> 1988, I applied to the JET program. Many of you may know the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program. Uh, it's kind of famous now and it's very large, but at the time it was just the second year of the JET program. I was fortunate to uh, be accepted and I was sent to Miyazaki Ken uh, to be a public high school English teacher there. So I taught uh, high school for three years. Then I taught at a junior college uh, for three years and attended a Japanese language school uh, there in Miyazaki Shi, uh, and then I switched careers to uh, a business career. I joined a Japanese company, and I was the Yunyu Tanto, uh, the import manager for that company, and helped develop products for importation uh, into retail stores there uh, for about another three years. Uh, came back to the United States in 1996 and lived in Los Angeles uh, at that time. And uh, really kind of wanted to circle back uh, again to uh, Atlanta. And in doing research, I came to find out how many Japanese companies are located here in our state and about the long and rich history uh, between Georgia and Japan and decided, well, I think I could pro probably find some employment uh, related to Japan if I came back to Atlanta. Uh, in 19, uh, let's see, in 2005, uh, came back and was fortunate uh, to get a position with the department as the uh, project manager for Japan. I was kind of the, the Japan guy uh, at that time uh, and began to work with uh, Yumiko Nakazono, who is uh, still, <laughs> for a little short time, our managing director of the Tokyo office and began to uh, help recruit uh, companies here and help the companies, Japanese companies that were already here, um, uh, expand uh, and just help them grow uh, in, in our state here. And so um, I was able to uh, utilize my uh, experience with uh, both, uh, you know, with the Japanese language, uh, with the culture, and of course, with the business culture uh, that I had uh, uh, experienced and was able to, uh, to really land, land this position um, to uh, help the state and have just really enjoyed uh, working with uh, so many Japanese companies and of course, organizations like the Japan America Society over these years. Well, and we greatly appreciate your participation in the Japan America Society of Georgia and on the board of directors. So appreciate your leadership. And of course, Georgia is very fortunate that you decided to come back I'm happy Emory was here to attract you in the first place, and I'm happy that we were able to attract you back. And again, your, your track record of results is exemplary. And uh, so we, we are grateful. Uh, speaking of, uh, we're happy that Georgia has uh, great professionals. Joseph Hunteman certainly is in that category. Uh, Joseph, Please share some of the extra special connections between Japan and Georgia, the great investment, the jobs, the real literal uh, economic development that, uh, that we enjoy. Al, thanks for the introduction and, and be glad to, of course. I mean, uh, as Scott said, uh, the Tokyo office uh, opened in 1973. That was our first international office. Uh, that was really before there was a Japanese investment presence here in the state. And, and since then, um, it depends on who you ask, right? Uh, the Japanese consulate have their numbers. We've got our numbers. Uh, Jetro has their numbers. Uh, but uh, we like to say that we have more than 600 Japanese companies invested here in the state that support more than 30,000 Georgians jobs 
and those numbers continue to grow. Um, in recent years, uh, we've seen uh, you know something of a shift, I guess, in, in the role of the department uh, in Japan simply because of the weight of the existing uh, industry base here. You know, it's it's uh, as Scott said at the outset, we do both new industry attraction as, as well as retention, uh, and uh, having to keep up with our uh, Japanese industry base is almost a full-time job in and of itself. Uh, we're, we're fortunate that we've got uh, full-time existing industry project managers in addition to folks like myself who work on recruitment. But um, as you can imagine, uh, even then uh, with some of the sort of um, special needs of, of Japanese companies, international companies, somebody in my position still gets brought in on occasion to work on expansion projects or to help out uh, with a company that's having some issues that they really feel the need to, to communicate in Japanese or communicate with somebody who has that connection. Uh, so um, as the uh, senior project manager on, on uh, our advanced manufacturing team that uh, still works with most of our Japanese companies, I do find myself kind, kind of pulled in a few uh, different directions sometimes, but it's all working toward that same goal of course, of supporting uh, jobs for Georgians here. And our Japanese corporate citizens uh, are, are some of the shining examples that we have of, of companies here in the state. Companies like uh, Kubota, companies like YKK that just continue to put more and more investment in the ground. Uh, Toyota Industries, which uh, I believe Scott was one of your projects uh, originally. Is that correct? You know, they just recently expanded uh, uh, up in Jackson County again uh, in the automotive industry and as that's pivoting to electric vehicles you know they're positioning themselves and continuing to evolve just like Kubota is continuing to involve with new product offerings here. Um, the, the, one of the wonderful aspects of Japanese investments is that they're always in it for the long haul. Uh, unlike uh, some other business cultures that are looking at quarterly earnings or, or maybe an annual report, uh, uh, the Japanese they're their sight lines are 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Uh, Scott, you'll remember when we were uh, working with uh, Marukan Vinegar down in uh, Griffin, Georgia, they, <laughs> when they approached uh, you, because it, it was right before I joined the department back in 2012, uh, if I remember correctly, Scott, didn't they say they were looking for a home for the next 40 years when they first came to us? Wasn't that it? That's correct, because I think they're only a 400-year-old company. As it only, is. only. Something like, <laughs> what, 13th generation family-owned company? <laughs> so we really do value uh, not only, uh, you know, the, the investment numbers and, and the job creation numbers that, that Japanese companies bring, but the loyalty, the longevity, and, and, and the fact that they really do form those unique, deep relationships uh, wherever they choose to invest. Well, we have certainly observed that with Japan America Society of Georgia and in my, my consulting realm as well around the state of Georgia. And there's also a match on the point of long-term investment because Georgia, take your pick, the Georgia Ports Authority, the uh, International Airport, and I will say transportation, and especially education. Georgia has continued to invest for the long term, and that has certainly helped with our workforce, which of course is a tremendous asset. Um, what other aspects, uh, Joseph, help with uh, the marketing and the reasons for expansion of these great Japanese companies? Well, as we say at the department, every company is really looking for the same things at the end of the day, a stable quality workforce, low cost of doing business, low regulatory hurdles, you know, within reason, of course, because we do value our environment, uh, both fiscally and, and uh, ecologically. Uh, but, uh, you know, we do, we do boast one of the largest populations in the Southeast. We, we boast uh, a high level of educational attainment, it, uh, not just in, um, uh, you know, four-year college degrees, but uh, as, as we often say when we're talking to companies uh, uh, and, and sort of pitching the state, uh, our people really are uh, our greatest incentive. And to that end, 
Uh, I think uh, most, if not everybody on this call is probably familiar with the Georgia Quick Start program, uh, customized workforce training. And that's, that's something that's, that's been a, another 40 plus, I guess almost 50 years. Scott, was it 67 that Quick Start? That's correct. 1967 was begun. And, uh, you know, that's something that can't be easily duplicated uh, because simply due to the years and years of investment in that network and investment in the training programs that we offer to companies, uh, uh, that's unique. And uh, again, looking at the long term, you know, really when we say our greatest incentive is put back into our citizens, the, the people of Georgia, through the training and education that they're given through programs like Quick Start. So that's usually, you know, the, one of the first uh, things we tout when we're talking to these companies. Uh, Japanese appreciate that. They, they appreciate that we're not simply uh, looking for a quick return on, on, on a check or a grant being given and, and turning it over, that uh, we're really ensuring that, that that environment is in place where they'll be able to continue to succeed thanks to those long-term investments in infrastructure, in education, uh, smart uh, incentives and, and smart fiscal uh, policies. You know, all of this uh, really is uh, very quickly picked up on by Japanese uh, management and leadership. Well, and that of course spells very, very good news. And I'm happy you mentioned Quick Start and administered primarily by the Technical College System of Georgia and we referenced Emory before. We need to give a, a nice compliment to Georgia Tech as uh, you were certainly well educated there and uh, great colleges throughout our state. I was uh, an international affairs uh, graduate twice over from Georgia Tech and uh, thought I was going to go into the State Department uh, more years ago than I want to discuss <laughs> necessarily, but, but uh, that absolutely has served me me very well in, in this role and could not be doing the work I do now without that background. Well, Joseph, you talked a little bit about uh, Georgia Tech and uh, some of your uh, educational background. And then Scott also discussed his unique uh, experiences, not only with Emory, uh, but also with Japan and how it takes, uh, you know, really a special kind of per person to thrive in the economic development role with Scott with his uh, teaching and uh, language skills, cultural awareness, uh, business, uh, just kind of understanding about the people to people relationship, right? So, and Joseph, um, he he also forgot to mention that uh, he's also a musician too. So it really takes a, a well around, uh, I guess, uh, uh, type of individual to, I guess, thrive uh, in this uh, uh, industry. But uh, for you, I know you have a very unique experience too. I don't know if you play guitar as well as Scott, but can you tell us about your unique experiences in Japan, but also working with Japanese government and community organizations that have uh, kind of helped you with your role with the department? Sure, and, and so let me just get out of the way. Scott's a better guitarist than I am a pianist, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always make sure I tell people I practice guitar, okay? I don't necessarily play, I practice. Modesty card, modesty card. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's just an interesting tidbit. So um, uh, I take piano lessons from a Japanese teacher uh, who was referred to me by coworkers at the Japanese consulate from my years working there. Uh, the uh, the Chuzain, the, uh, the expats would send their kids to this teacher. And so when I decided I wanted to pick up an instrument, uh, I, I'd played in, in high school and uh, had gotten out of it since then thinking, okay, if I'm going to play solo, because I was just living in an apartment at the time, it's either guitar or piano. So we know which one Scott chose and I chose the other. I don't know what that says about our respective personalities, <laughs> but um, got a referral to a, a Japanese piano teacher who um, her husband worked with uh, Denim, the, the uh, audio equipment and studio company and, and he was here uh, as an expat employee and she was ha had a piano classroom out of out of their home and uh, got connected there and so I've been taking those lessons for oh gosh since 2009 11 12 years now <laughs> wow okay. and uh, after uh, I, I make my eventual move to Tokyo uh, for my new role uh, whenever 
the the Japanese government may may let that happen. Uh, I'll be seeing her again. Uh, I've been taking lessons over Skype, but uh, we'll be uh, back to in person instruction uh, in Tokyo. Well, let's hear more about that. Uh, the exciting news for 2021. Uh, tell us more about what's in store. Yes, so uh, Scott mentioned our current Tokyo office managing director, Yumiko Nakazono, who has had a distinguished career. Um, she doesn't like us to mention how many years she's worked at the department, but in this case, I, I think it's worth recognizing 30 years of uh, distinguished service and probably uh, responsible for more recruitment and investment than any single employee still working at the department. I agree. I'm sure. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Yumiko, uh, my feet are probably three or four sizes larger than hers, and I still don't know how I'm going to fill her shoes when <laughs> I'm over there. But uh, I've definitely got uh, a lot of work ahead of me. She's doing an excellent job prepping me. Uh, she's handing me all of uh, the the guides and materials to managing the office uh, after she retires. She's with us through the end of uh, February. And um, we've, uh, I've already extended invitations to her to make sure that she is welcome to attend any and all Georgia receptions or economic development events that we have uh, even after she retires because I know that all of those company representatives are gonna want to talk to her much more than they're gonna want to talk to me. And I have no problem with that whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> that was always my experience in traveling around Japan with uh, Yumiko is if I happened to walk into a room before she did and saw someone, they said, hey, Scott, how you doing? Uh, where, where's Yumiko? You know, it's always the first question. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, Joseph, I know um, with, with you uh, going to Japan and uh, leading the, the office there, uh, the Georgia office there. Uh, there's some big shoes to, to fill here in Atlanta and Georgia as well. Um, but we are so lucky that uh, there's some um, positive and happy news uh, in the Georgia front too, as we have Miss Melissa Takeuchi uh, coming on board to the department. So Melissa, thanks so much for being with us today. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're sort of like a a hybrid between uh, Scott and Joseph as you've done the JET program taught English in Japan and also worked at the consulate too. So tell us a little bit about your connections to Japan and how you think that will fit in with your role at the department. Sure, first of all, thank you for having me. I really, I'm happy to be here. Um, I'd like to say that unfortunately I do not play an instrument, um, although I can sing karaoke. So uh, apologies there, <laughs> um, but I, um, I have connections to the Japanese community here in that um, I've been involved with Japan America Society since, gosh, the first time I came back after JET, which was 2010. It was August and the month later, I actually uh, volunteered at the campus. So that was really exciting. Um, but I'm originally from Georgia. So um, I actually grew up in Conyers, which has the uh, second largest cherry blossom festival in Georgia. And I uh, remember going there and doing hanami. Uh, I got introduced to yakitori. Um, it was really, really fun. So I um, studied Japanese in college. I studied abroad in Chiba, Kandagai Godai Gaku. And I came after college, I went on the JET program for five years in Kyogo Prefecture. And then after that, I came back and I worked at uh, Topan Inter-America, which is in McDonough. And I did that for two years as a bilingual administrative assistant to uh, the president. I learned a lot there and got interested more in the business aspect as well as the Japanese, um, Japanese business style. But then an opening came to the consulate and I actually studied international affairs and economics in college. So the international affairs aspect was really interesting to me. And I wanted to get more involved in the Japanese community across the South and including Georgia. And so I was able to get that position. I have worked there for eight years now in various positions related to culture and diplomacy, some economics, political, um, political affairs and all kinds of activities there. I've actually been involved in Japan American Society quite a bit. Um, and of course our office works really closely with the department 
but um, I'm most excited about coming on to the department as a new project manager because being from Georgia, I, I feel a special connection to bringing Japanese companies here. I know how uh, amazing the state is. I know how amazing the people are here. Um, I'm learning more about the incentives and I'm learning more about um, the specific education and all of that, but I know at least the people here in Georgia are, are fantastic. And I know also from my experience working in the Japanese business world that the Japanese companies bring fantastic jobs. And I know that, that Georgians really deserve those jobs. And um, I know also that Japanese companies will feel comfortable here because of the Southern hospitality. And, you know, that's really a big part of the, you know, the Japanese company's choice to go where they go. And Japan, you have omotenashi, and of course here we have Southern hospitality. And, and I really think that the companies benefit the community and the community benefits the company. And, and I really wanna continue Joseph's work. Um, although I definitely cannot fill your, fill your shoes, Joseph, but I wanna get close to it. Um, Don't say that yet. Um, <laughs> M Melissa, when I was, uh, you know, after we'd had our initial discussions and I was kind of um, pitching you for this uh, job inside the department, you know, I, I made a point, you had a pretty unique perspective uh, thanks to your time at Topan uh, because you happened to be working there right when I happened to be helping them with their new investment project that uh, eventually ended up in Griffin. So you were kind of privy to the inside workings of an investment project, even before uh, you ever really uh, were approached by us at the department, right? <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. Um, being there and working with the president, and keep in mind, this was 2011 and 2012. So the economy was not quite the best at that time. And yet, just like you mentioned earlier, the Japanese companies want the long-term investment. And Topan could see that. And, and I would help with, of course, the Japanese executives when they interacted with their American counterparts. I was involved even with their auditing and all of the sales department. So I, you're right, I did see that. And I did see the importance of the community and their future outlooks and how important the, uh, just keeping in mind that even though they were having a downturn and the recession, that they knew that better times were coming and they were happy to invest in that because they knew Georgia um, just had a lot to give. You're right. Well, that's such a positive example of many uh, for Japan and Georgia. And I'm happy that you played a role with that investment. That was a great sneak preview. And also we appreciate, of course, you're working with Japan American Society of Georgia uh, through the Consul General's office and just um, all, all, all the extra efforts that you've made, for instance, Japan Fest. What are you looking forward to the most with your new role? In this position, I, well, there's a lot of things I'm looking forward to. Initially, I'm really looking forward to learning all about the position. Um, of course, the technical aspects of it, but also traveling Georgia more and learning more about the communities. Even though I'm a native Georgian, I haven't traveled as much as I probably should have. And, and really getting into the smaller towns and, and learning about what's there and what are those people like? And of course, connecting those with Japan. So that's gonna be a big part. Um, but I, I mean, honestly, long-term, I, I suppose it sounds a little cliche, but I really am looking forward to connecting Japanese companies with the, the residents of Georgia and finding the best fit for both the citizens of Georgia, the residents, as well as the company. So. I mean, this, this job is just, in my opinion, perfect for me. I'm really excited about it. It has everything that um, I want to learn is in this position. So I'm really, really honored to be selected. Um, and I'm really excited to get started. Well, we certainly appreciate your enthusiastic interest. Look forward to working with you for sure. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. You know, we always are looking for, for the right fit uh, at the department when we're looking for uh, other colleagues to, to kind of join us in our, in our economic development uh, efforts. And, and Melissa really just checked all the boxes uh, for us. Uh, and we're very excited uh, as well uh, to have Melissa 
come on board. Thank you for saying that, Scott. I look forward to it. Yeah, and really, you know, we always say up at the department, you know, we we are here for for the people of the state first and foremost. So right. uh, love hearing that uh, she's looking forward to getting to know everybody in those small towns across the state as well as well as the the larger municipalities. Uh, Al, you were on the other side for years uh, up in Rome, and uh, so we we had plenty of opportunities to work up there. Uh, Melissa, you're going to get plenty of chances, I'm sure, to work with Al's successors up there. <laughs> That's uh, uh, Heather's. Uh, if I remember correctly, Heather is still keeping the fort uh, while uh, Missy Kendrick is uh, sort of leading the, the, yes. the charge up there. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's so hard to keep up with everybody uh, under COVID conditions these days. So Right. Well, you've done so, well. And then Jeannie Krieger and Pam Power Smith uh, are uh, supporting the existing industry through the Greater Rome Existing Industry Association, part of the Chamber of Commerce in Rome. And uh, truly, Melissa, whether it's Savannah and the Port and Nashville and, uh, golly, Statesboro, um, I think... Tifton and Moultrie have really done a great job of uh, leveraging the rural areas of our state. And then of course, Gainesville is, Gainesville and Griffin are legendary for what all they've been able to accomplish to attract Japanese companies. And, and again, throughout the state, right, Joseph? Yeah, we've even got, uh, you know, down in Valdosta, our glass Yamamura uh, recently announced um, in just talking with uh, other Japanese companies, it really does uh, their ears perk up when they hear about other Japanese investments in different parts of the state. Uh, so, especially in an area like like South Georgia, you know, where uh, it has a lot to offer for for, for the right companies. But uh, as you know, the Japanese they'd like to be closer to the airport. They like to be closer to. Uh, Asian grocery stores, things of that nature. But seeing a company like that being able to move in and invest uh, in, a, in a town like Valdosta really is uh, a big encouragement to other companies that are thinking about those investments. And, and we're always uh, looking, you know, to find that optimum fit. And sometimes it, it's Gainesville or Griffin or Rome, and sometimes it's Valdosta or Tifton or Moultrie. And, uh, just uh, one of the nicer aspects of, of Japanese investment is we get a, a full range, right? It's not just huge manufacturing projects. It's not just small, uh, you know, maybe uh, one or two person uh, technology offices that aren't gonna venture far from Metro Atlanta. It, it really is everything in between. And then that's uh, another big reason why Japan is such an important investor nation for us. Well, the, uh, the Heather Seckmans and the Cal Rays, all the, all the staff professionals around the state are, are certainly ready to work with, with you, Melissa, and are certainly uh, a lot of feedback about uh, wanting to wish you well, Joseph, and uh, work with you while you're in, in Tokyo, of course, and throughout, the, uh, throughout Japan. Yeah, I think, you know, we've got such a great story to tell uh, going back to when I first joined the department in 2005, uh, Japan and Georgia did have a very uh, strong relationship, but as far as the department went and everything, pretty much, I mean, it was just me uh, and, uh, and Yumiko, of course, uh, on the other side of the pond there. Uh, uh, but over the, over the years, you know, recruiting more companies, uh, getting to know all the Japanese um, uh, companies here uh, and the cultural side of things as well. Um, and then as I, as I kind of moved up through the department, uh, suddenly I found myself uh, as a director and needed to find uh, someone who could uh, manage the day-to-day -day Japanese uh, projects. And I was very, very lucky to, to come across uh, Joseph. And, um, you know, when, when I was first hired, of course, they were looking for an American who spoke Japanese. And that's what I had on my resume. But when I interviewed with like six or seven different people in the department, none of them spoke Japanese. So they had no idea if what I... <laughs> <laughs> my resume was the truth or not. So they handed me a telephone number and said, call this woman in, 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 in Tokyo tonight. And so I got on the phone and I had an interview with Yumiko in Japanese. And the next day she called uh, my boss, my future boss and said, oh, he, he can speak Japanese. He's going to be okay. So I got the, 
I got the uh, the okay, got the nod from from Yumiko. And then when I hired Joseph, we spoke a little Japanese, and I handed uh, Joseph a brochure that was all about the logistics industry in Georgia, but it was all in Japanese. I said, "Tell me what this says." And Joseph says, "Oh, logistics and freight rates and the port." And all. I said, "Okay, good. You're solid." All. But can you call this woman in Tokyo? <laughs> <laughs> so Joseph interviewed with Yumiko, and the next day I got a phone call that said, "Oh, Joseph's good. He's fine. He's solid." <laughs> and so this time around, as as Joseph is now moving up, we needed to find the next successor, and came across uh, Melissa. And knowing uh, from the the folks that we talked about, you know, Melissa's references, and everybody knows Melissa. They said, "Oh, Melissa's Japanese, hundred percent, no problem." But I said. Uh, could you call this number and talk to this woman? <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're, we all we all went through the same process. Then. And and, and uh, you know, technology has slowly progressed, even at the department, because it, it was a uh, a Microsoft Teams video call. <laughs> uh, and uh, as I love Yumiko for all of her unique skills, but IT is not her strongest suit. So <laughs> I had to set up the call and uh, was really not intending you know i wanted it to be a one-on-one -on -one with with yumiko and melissa let them speak freely not even have to think about me being in the room but i had to leave my computer running during that meeting because i was the the organizer in the system oh, so right. i just left the room and, and muted the computer and i i came back gosh i think it was at five till it was coming up on an hour and that was the limit on, on the meeting appointment in the system. So I had to, I come back, I thought surely they'd be done by now. No, they're still talking to one another <laughs> in Japanese. I don't even remember what the subject matter was, but I had to put into the chat a five minute warning to Yumiko and Melissa that the software is going to cut off here. So you guys need to wrap it up. That's, that's how quickly they hit it off. Well, um, I like these inside stories and that's part of what Yoshi likes about these these programs is that I recall we had some of this with retention and expansion with Japanese companies on a webinar. We had it with recruitment and now we're having it with the staff professionals, the, the human resources side, especially the human resources side. So all of this is great. Scott, let's take a, a broader view for a moment. What is the future of Japan and Georgia and what can everybody that's uh, watching this and participating with the state and with Japan American Society of Georgia, uh, what give us some perspective and, and an outlook from your from your viewpoint, please? Sure, uh, of course, Al. Um, of course, uh, anyone can contact us by by going to uh, our website, and our, our information is on there with uh, with email. Uh, addresses. Uh, mine is smcmurray at georgia.org. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, with the future, I guess it, next month will be, will be 16 years for me uh, at the department. And um, I think, you know, what, what this really shows in, in kind of my telling the story of, of my joining and then bringing Joseph aboard and then, and then Melissa is that um, it used to be just me. You know, and, and and Yumiko, but you know, Joseph has worked projects in Japan. Joseph knows Georgia down cold. He had the landscape, uh, and then of course Melissa being from Georgia. I think uh, just trying to say that I, the future I think is going to be even better and stronger in our relationship. We've got uh, folks now. This is a bigger team. Uh, it's people who uh, know Japan, have uh, you know a, a, a passion uh, for Japan and the culture. Uh, and so with uh, me being in my position as the deputy commissioner, kind of overseeing the whole uh, division, uh, Joseph is going to be working. Uh, the Japan market will be there in real time for both uh, new industries to recruit, uh, as well as working with uh, companies that already have a presence here. Uh, and then on a daily basis, Joseph and Melissa will be communicating uh, about projects and I'll be working with Melissa. So uh, every day on just on the, the nuts and bolts of project management uh, to get Melissa up and running. And Melissa uh, will be starting with us on the 16th mm -hmm. of February will be uh, Melissa's first day. And so I'm just personally very, very excited about about the future of, again, of Georgia-Japan relations, strengthening our relationship 
as always with the Japan America Society of Georgia and uh, really having now a true team in place to just further uh, strengthen uh, this relationship. Well, that is, uh, that's very encouraging. That is very encouraging. Well, Scott and or anybody else that wants to participate in this answer, going forward, what does a staff professional in Catoosa County or uh, Bullock County, uh, what does Keith Barcliffe or uh, Benji Thompson, what should we be doing? Uh, we meaning local folks across the state in this case uh, to uh, make certain that we're prepared for that next Japanese investment. I'll let, I'll let Joseph, the new managing director, uh, take that one. Well, I mean, what, like we always tell communities, just make sure that you're constantly cultivating your, your, your products, make sure that you're constantly communicating to us at the department what you have uh, on offer. Because uh, again, uh, we, don't, uh, we don't pick out which communities these companies go to. That's uh, you know, far beyond our powers or abilities. Uh, but uh, the communities, they're, they're simultaneously our customers and our product, right? So we need to know uh, from the customer standpoint what they're looking for, what's a, in their mind a good fit for their own communities. And uh, from a product standpoint, we need to know what they have uh, available in terms of uh, sites for potential investment, in terms of workforce and educational resources, infrastructure, all of those things that uh, a company is going to be looking for. So we can make that match, right, between what the community has to offer and what the company is looking for when, uh, when they come to us saying we've got uh, a potential investment and we'd like to know if there's a good fit for us that here in Georgia. Well, I th thank you that for that. And that's such a great uh, answer. And we also invite uh, folks that... Um, that are involved with Japan American Society of Georgia to, to take a look at one of the previous webinars about this topic and to get involved, of course, if you're not already a member with Japan American Society of Georgia. That goes for communities. It also goes for corporations. And with that in mind, we have a lot of Georgia-based companies that do business in Japan and vice versa. What should the corporate exec or the uh, public relations person do uh, to make certain that there's a connection. So uh, when you mean uh, a connection, you, I take it to mean uh, from the Georgia side, executives yeah, yeah. over here, just uh, really know, first of all, that uh, our office in Tokyo is always open. If they've got anything they're, they're, they're looking to uh, to open up or, or consider whether it's uh, trying to break into the Japanese domestic market uh, with products or services, or uh, if they're looking for uh, supply uh, chain assistance. You know, we maintain, all of this is, is a team effort and that's why we maintain such close relationships, not just with uh, the businesses and communities here on the Georgia side, but the Japan External Trade Organization and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in, in, in Japan uh, really, um, we take any and all inquiries, uh, but our main function at, at the department, is, you know, is, is making connections, whether that's connecting uh, communities to potential investors, or whether that's connecting Georgia businesses to uh, those resources that will facilitate uh, their business needs overseas in, in overseas markets. So um, just, uh, you know, honesty is the best policy, open communication lines, make things easier and, and make sure that uh, the entire team is involved. But uh, any companies can always come to the department as a first resource and, and we'll be happy to bring in partners a, as needed. Well, I really like that answer, most especially the part about the partnerships. And uh, Jetro is certainly a great partner along with Consul General of Japan and the the work that the state does across agencies and the close coordination and cooperation is legendary. 
And uh, I guess one of the reasons why for multiple years, Georgia has been the number one place uh, for investment in the entire United States. And we're looking forward to even more and even better news about all of that. And of course, with our focus uh, for Japan and Georgia. Thank you, each of you, for your participation today. And I will toss to Yoshi for any other questions and closing comments. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, as, as everyone mentioned, uh, I know it's all about partnerships and the people, people of connections, uh, you know, in business, economic development, or anything uh, successful in life. You know, you need other people to, to make it all happen, right? So, so I highly uh, commend everyone on this call for uh, making Georgia the number one place for business, not only for Japanese companies, but I think for uh, several years running, Georgia has been recognized as the number one uh, location uh, for doing business here in the U.S. Uh, so so we, we certainly appreciate all the support from the department uh, over the years. Uh, at the same time, uh, if there's anything that the Japan American Society of Georgia can do, uh, for you, Scott, Joseph, and Melissa, moving forward, we're, we're always here, and uh, hopefully we can uh, continue collaborating together to make Georgia a better place, not only for the Japanese, uh, but everyone here living in Georgia, Americans as well, too. So, so thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you all in person, uh, hopefully very soon. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Yoshi. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Yoshi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.